project is on the Battle of Midway. Battle of Midway was six months after the attack on Pearl Harbor and one month after Battle of the Coral Sea. And at, at the attack on Pearl Harbor, it, um, the Japanese actually sank eight ships and damaged 19 other ones. And they, and they also um, destroyed about 2,000 planes. If we go to the Battle of the Coral Sea, um, the Americans heavily damaged one of the Japanese car uh, heavy carrier and and sunk a light carrier of the Japanese, and the Japanese sunk one aircraft carrier, the Lexington. And the Japanese were planning to attack Midway and invade it so they could conquer all of America. And and at that time, American code breakers were trying to break the code JM-25. Now, JM-25 was a Japanese code, so they had to break it. And their code, and they actually broke the code, and it was AF. That meant that was Midway Island was a target. So, Yorktown was also hit by a bomb at the Battle of the Coral Sea, right in its front deck, at, right at its front. And also, um, Commander Chester in the midst all had put had put Yorktown to work with every worker basically in Hawaii for, in dry dock so he could fix it in time for the Battle of Midway. And the other two carriers, Hornet and Enterprise, were also involved in the Battle of Midway. Um, the Japanese sent their four carriers, Akagi, Kaga, Hiryu, and Suryu. Suryu and Hiryu had a um, control tower on the port side, but Akagi and Kaga had theirs on the starboard side. He, um, Kaga was the uh, main thing to set the role model for other Japanese carriers, even though it was even though it was smaller, but it was also wider, so it could hold a lot of planes as long as the other ones. And at the Battle of Midway, Americans sent a bunch of things to Midway, troops, um, guns, radio equipment, planes, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Now the Americans sent their ships, they were at the north of Midway. And the Yorktown was in Task Force 17, and the Enterprise and Hornet were in Task Force 16. Now the other group of Japanese carriers was at the south of Midway, which they were in the box formation, all of them. They were all together, and and the, on, June, on the morning of June 4th, the Japanese launched a whole bunch of bombers and they attacked Midway. So, they, so while they were doing that, the Americans took a few torpedo bombers and launched them. And then the other ones, which are fighters, the tor which fought off the Japanese zeros, they actually killed three or four. Um, the torpedo bombers had no luck against the Japanese. Only two or three made it back to Midway. But oh, but when they launched their torpedoes, they never hit because the Japanese had a special formation. And and uh, there were also B-17s there. Um, the hangars were never touched. And the dock was only a small bomb right into it. And the radio place was never touched. Um, the landing strips had only one or two craters in them. The landing strip and the takeoff strip had only a few craters. Um, and while the Americans were at north, they were they were launch they were gonna launch an attack at them while the Japanese while Japanese scout plane saw went over them and saw that there was a whole fleet or convoy of 11 ships, and then later the Japanese learned that they were accompanied by one carrier, the Yorktown. And then these, while they were this, while they were rearming their planes with torpedoes, the Enterprise, Hornet, and Yorktown launched dive bombers and Dauntless dive bombers and Wildcat fighters to go attack the Japanese carriers. Now, three of the Japanese carriers were sunk. Suryu, Akagi, and Kaga were sunk. The Hiryu was only two one bomb, and then later in the day it was sunk. All four Japanese carriers were sunk, but they also had launched airplanes, and they also and they sunk the Yorktown. And that, and I also have a few pictures of the Battle of Midway. If you would like to pass it around, you could. Otherwise, I see two pictures. 
picture around one, one at a time. Three dead point five pictures. Hey, that's the one that you looked at. Also, um, every, every, the Yorktown was um, protected by heavy cruisers, cr um, cruisers and destroyers, and the Enterprise and War were, cr were, were protected by heavy cruisers, cruisers, and destroyers. The Japanese fleet was protected by two battleships, a few cruisers, and a few, and a few heavy cruisers, and a bunch of destroyers. And the B-17s also did a little bit of damage. They also released a few bombs and kind of some cure you. And the Enterprise and Hornets were actually made it to the end of the war. And that is my pet project. So um, if you have questions for John, if you raise your hand, then he can call on you. Okay, so if you have questions yes, about... Um, what are those things on the carrier? These? On the U.S. carriers? Yeah. These? Yeah. They're the, rig they're the control towers. What? Well, what's the difference between the fact that the Japanese had the control towers on two different sides? You mentioned the port and the starboard. Can you explain what port and starboard is, Jonah? Some people don't know what port and starboard is. The port side is the left side of the ship, and the starboard side is the right, if you, if you are so <laughs> What's the difference? The difference is that if it's on the port side, they can get a view on the, more view of the left side, but if it's on the starboard side, then they can get a better view of the right, of the, of the starboard side. Why don't they just have a control tower on each side to get a better view of each side? Because the, cause on control towers, they only usually have it on the side that's facing out the way the side that it is and forward. So you can they don't want to get in the way of where the planes have to land. Right, right. So, so the Japanese had, what? had it on both sides. No, no. No. Two of, their, two of their prep carriers were old ones. So okay. On one side. Okay. Yes. Yeah, they had two old ones were on the port. And who was the head of the American dive bomber group? Do you know the name of the person who was the head of the dive bomber group? Admiral Chester Nimitz. No, the, the actual pilot. You should know that, Jonah. Come on. <laughs> I read a lot in there. He never said. He had never said. Commander. <laughs> yeah, he had a girl's name. Commander. Uh, Alex. You know, <laughs> Commander Leslie. <laughs> that's, that's it sounds like the Langley, the first U.S. Wow. carrier. So was this an important battle in the war? Yes, it was. It was a turning point in the war. Wow. In the Pacific. It was. Uh -huh. In the Pacific, not in, the, not in Europe. So would you explain what turning point of the war means? And it's like it turned. So Japanese kept kept on actually winning battles, but the Americans kept up. But the American. But at the turning point, which was about midway, the Americans won the seven, then they started winning a bunch. But then the Japanese invented the Kame cases, which just ran right into the ships and, and like destroyed them. Sorry, or damaged. It was the first time the Japanese lost a big battle. Yeah. Well, they also, I don't know if it was a tie at the Coral Sea. Draw? It was a draw. Also, um, at the battle of midway, the the destroy the destroyer for the U.S. Hague Haman was sunk, and the destroy and a heavy cruiser, um, um, <laughs> the cruiser Hammer was sunk. I mean destroyer and the heavy cruiser from the Japanese um, Bakuma was sunk. If you have saw one of the pictures with the dive bombers. Tony, you have a question. Yeah. So would there also be a.
size of Alaska, so they could take over Alaska. So they could take over Alaska, work their way through Canada, and then use the same thing, but it was a bad Alaska. Then in South America, try to take over the whole world. That's why. You want to hear a funny story? Do you want to? I just want to tell you guys a short story you don't know. The Japanese actually had a secret program in 1920. I just want to tell you guys a short story you don't know. The Japanese actually had a secret program to hurt the people of Seattle. Do you know that? What? Seattle had, there's a lot of trees in the Pacific Northwest, right? So they would kill them. No, so the Japanese actually built these um, balloons. Yeah. And they went, part yeah. of their, they went up I in know. airplanes and they released these things and the winds would catch them to carry them over here. Once they got over land and there was, they were timed, they were supposed to drop bombs to start all of our force on fire. And then they were the other ones were supposed to keep going across the country, and as they went, drop rats with little parachutes. And the rats were infected with diseases. And they were supposed to go run all over America and disease the people of America. Thousands of rats. Not one balloon with the rats on it made it to the United States. They all sank over the Pacific. But the bombs actually started fires in the world. Yeah, I think the I think the Japanese planes could make it. No balloons, yeah, balloons. So that would be a good subject for a report someday. Is on the secret. Why well, exactly the one we're doing next year? Is one flying over Canada? Yeah, yeah. So was there a base in the world? Yeah, sure. There was. Okay, and that's why they chose that. But they, cause I so they could take over. So they, so if they took over Hawaii, then they could take over. So if they took over Bigway, then they could take over Hawaii, then they could take over the. So it's a whole island. Okay. Okay. Oh, Jonah, can I say something? Yeah. Jonah, during the time, Grandma and Zadie lived in New York, and we heard President Roosevelt say that the day in infamy because they destroyed the entire base. Well, they left the well, they left the oil tanks, electrical places, right. and houses. They destroyed all well, the in houses. Hawaii. In Hawaii, and some of the and it was some on the a Sunday when the, when the the um, troops were praying, but most of them were not Jews, so they were in their churches, and that's why they destroyed. Navy did you know what? Did you know what school I get? I think the attack on Pearl Harbor was actually what school actually got destroyed. And there was an unexploded bomb in the classroom, so nobody could go. I think it was their social studies classroom. Jimmy, what's your question? Thank you, Jonah. Jonah is the poster child for independent practice. Any underwater things have to do with this? Oh yeah, some there are. There were a few submarines around Hawaii to try to stop ships from getting stuff to. Ha, 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 ha.